Mystery Science Theater 3000 was brought back from the dead for the third time? Comedy Central killed it, Sci-Fi Channel killed it, Netflix killed it, yeah, third time. And now it's on its own platform, the Gizmoplex. And from 2022 to 2023, said Gizmoplex gave us rotating casts of delightful riffers, including the return of Joel Robinson, all riffing on monthly features and monthly shorts, one of which shares a universe with a short that I already riffed? Well, Sally Gasco did one. Gasco! When the, the Gasco family's name was changed at Ellis Island from the Utilities Co. family. Does the fact that I riffed a Sally Gasco short one month before Servo was incredulous about Sally Gasco's name mean that I'm qualified to be one of the next Servos? Please? But more importantly for this video, a new MST3K season means new MST3K songs. And new MST3K songs means I'm gonna rank them. There weren't that many new songs this season, and I'm not counting covers of existing MST3K songs, so none of the Christmas medley at the end, but there were still enough songs that warrant a ranking, so welcome to the D-List, the show where I list things and my name begins with the D. Number five. Wait, Santo is in the treasure, so he's part of the treasure, or? After Santo's underwhelmed response to the supernatural events of the film, Jonah and the bots pay tribute to a more reactive character. Oh, Crow, do you mean the one, the only, Perico! All rise for the Perico Loyalty Club March! Perico, Go. he is loyal and true. Yes, when you're this desperate for a character on screen to have an emotional reaction, even this low-rent Jerry Lewis will do it for you. There standing was the man with the ma ma Don't ma be a liar, Perico. There's no one there. I swear on my sons, I saw the man standing there. You don't have any sons. For the ones I will have. I doubt it. I, for one, think the somewhat off-rhythm nature of the march is an appropriate tribute to this particular character. Perico! He steals every scene. He's the bestest wrestling sidekick that there ever has been. Look, I've seen movies that are so boring that even bad comic relief would be more interesting than what's going on, so I too appreciate Perico. Perico! Yeah. Ah, Perico. Number four. I have a million eyes for I am Sumeru. I don't see how the two tie together, but okay, I guess that, uh, oh, I see. After an underwhelming end to an underwhelming villainess, Kinga wants to pay tribute to the villainesses she inspired. Sumeru wants so that we could run. You'll all bow down before us by the time we're done. This song doesn't really demonstrate how Sumeru inspired anyone else. It just kinda lists other villainesses. And only a handful at that. All my girls up to their old tricks. Hella, Cruella, and Bella tricks. Cersei and Ursula coming for you. Also Ursa from Superman 2. Now that there are more women in the Mystery Science Theater cast, I'm glad we returned to the girl group song. The Girl Boss Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Group song. Try saying that five times fast. Super But then the song just kind of cuts itself off in the middle. The leaders of our respected packs. Go ahead and push the button, Max. Sorry. Um. I said push the button, Max! I love any chance to hear Felicia sing, and I would have loved this expanded into a fuller song, actually exploring Sumeru's influence on other supervillainesses and listing even more supervillainesses, but I guess a less anticlimactic ending wouldn't have been right for a song inspired by Sumeru. And now to let the disappointment wash over you. Number three. The Gamera Cinematic Universe has always been one of the most musical in the Mystery Science catalog. Gamera is really neat. He is filled with turtle meat. We all love you, Gamera. And that musicality continued in Gamera vs. Jiger. Gamera, take the body home. Gonna eat the flesh and bone. Keto diet, Gamera. Camera's a movie that has no end in sight. No going home. This is now your life. And that musicality continues into the final host segment. I can't think of anyone more deserving than a good old Irish monster funeral song, huh? Ah. So let's throw back another round of Jagger Bombs and sing! Ah. Yeah! 
She came from Wester Island, beneath a rock bound bed, been sleeping off a banda and an aching giant head. Like most recent MST3K songs, this was written by Paul and Storm, who know a thing or two about writing Irish drinking songs. Now everybody's died, so until our tears are dried, we'll drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and then we'll drink some more. Something, 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 la da 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 something, something, la da da and who know a thing or two about showing up in my musical D-lists. I wasn't planning on having them so represented two months in a row, but hey. So raise a glass and shed a tear and roar, roar, full roar To the monster of our hearts who isn't living anymore I feel like there's no better premise for both an Irish drinking song and a mystery science theater song than mourning that friend who was kind of bad at everything and you're still kind of bitter at, but eh, you kind of miss him anyway. And Oh, I'm going to miss you, Jiger. Oh, Jiger was too beautiful for this world in a hideously malformed way. Number two. You probably noticed the soundtrack to Beyond Atlantis featured literally every genre of music except one. Until now. It's Emily's first song. Written by Every Place I Cry's own Ross Bryant, this gives the characters of Beyond Atlantis a chance to rap about their whole deal. Whatever that whole deal was. I'm a mother crabber, a live coral stabber, open to the waist, no button should have her. Hopping on my boat and I sail like a regatta, going through the water like a Mirius's daughter. It's no every country has a monster, but it's still way better than Beyond Atlantis deserves. Hey, 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 all those oh, look at those pearls. pearls. My pearls at. Where my pearls at? Where my pearls at? Where my pearls at? No, Pearl's not in this segment. Where's I'm a mother crabber, live coral stabber, beard, no mustache, loincloth have And the segment is the episode introduction of the newer, easier to puppeteer and easier to take on tour, GPC2. You can't argue with the results. Did you hear those bars I just laid down? Yeah. Doesn't change the fact that I'm a... Yeah. Mother crabber, live coral stabber, puka shell necklace, white suit. And then we get a bit of the instrumental over the credits. It's pretty simple. Of course, the song still doesn't answer the main question one would have about the movie. So what is a mother crabber anyway? A mom who goes crabbing? And my number one favorite mystery science theater song from the Gizmoplex era so far. Somebody stop me from saying somebody stop me. The Gizmoplex season includes an episode called The Mask, which is two major firsts for MSC3K. The first MSC3K Halloween special and the first MSC3K episode in 3D. Well, parts of it in 3D in an optional version, but it's also the only episode of the season to have a song in the middle of the episode instead of the final segment. That's no reflection on the song's quality, it's just kind of noteworthy. And that song in the middle of the episode is... A Monster Mash Parody! Can we make up our own novelty song? And can it be about monsters going to a party? Well, good news, Crow. By law, all Halloween novelty songs have to be about monsters going to a party. This episode dropped five days after my Monster Mash Parodies D-list was released. Paul and Storm came in number one on that list with Lame Monster Party, and now they've crafted this natural extension of their earlier take on the match that comes in number one on this list. Ooh. Every monster got one, but to my surprise, midnight struck, I started getting their replies. What? Jason said he's staying home and sharpening his axes. Okay. Frankenstein, he needs time to finish up his taxes. Taxes? Norman Bates, his mom's in town. Jigsaw's toilet's leaking. What? The mommy and the shining twins have planned oh. for antiquing. No, they can't come. Yes, the only thing lamer than a monster party where nobody's having fun is a monster party where nobody even shows up. Ego borrowed corpses, now he's gotta go replant them. Dracula's big enough because he's got tickets to see Phantom? And it really does feel, in the best way, like an alternate version of Lame Monster Party. They both feature more modern, more copyrighted monsters, and they both just feature those monsters being just too lame. It's such a major bummer that nobody will come over. Jeez, oh, they even got blown off by Casper? Cram. And Grover. So nobody comes to the party, but after intermission sign, there's a follow-up for the next holiday season. Wait, hold on, maybe that's it. 
What if we just invited all the monsters over on a day when they're not doing anything? Cambot, hit it! So instead of scheduling their party for the busy day for monsters, they schedule their party for the busy day for Misties. A smorgasbord of dishes for the living and deceased. It's a hairy, scary, spooky, spooky, turkey day! Look, there's no doubt in my mind Bobby Boris Pickett would have gotten to Thanksgiving eventually, after all the other holidays. Yes, they will come. And that's my ranking of the new songs in the Gizmoplex episodes so far. But which of these songs is your favorite? Let's discuss this all in the comments, and if you like this video, you might want to revisit my earlier Mystery Science Theater videos, including a couple of interviews and two earlier song lists, or all my lists in general, or my own meager attempts at riffing. Go leave angry comments on my riffs about how I don't deserve to be one of the new servos. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.